Okay, boys and girls, this is our um, chapter one review for our quiz. A uh, few things that you need to know. You, one is you need to know how to make a number line. So, for example, if I'm going to make a vertical, or sorry, a horizontal number line, if you remember, we talked about horizontal means like the horizon, so it needs to go from left to right. So, in a horizontal number line, if I say, okay, represent the numbers that are between uh, 1 and 5, uh, you would make your number line like this. You have to make sure that you have arrows going across. And remember, this is horizontal. So it says between 1 and 5, so we must include these numbers. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But you only dot the numbers that are within the data set. So we dot 2, 3, and 4. The reason why we're dotting 2, 3, and 4 is because the keyword is between. If it said from, then we would include 1 and 5 in the data set, in the number line. Okay, the next thing that you definitely need to know is how to order fractions. So there's several ways to do it. So let me get three fractions out for you. So let's, let's try 1 half, we'll try 1 third, and we'll try uh, 3 fourths. Okay, so uh, there's several ways to do this. One way is to go ahead and start cross multiplying and then you can narrow it down and, and, and order them from there. So let's remember what cross multiplying is. So if I take the first two fractions, I have one half and I have one third. And if I cross multiply, if you remember in class, we go up and up. So three times one is three, two times one is two, so one half is going to be bigger than one third. Okay, so now I'm going to take one half and I'm just going to write down one third. And I'm going to take one half and three fourths and we're going to go ahead and we're going to cross multiply and compare them. So let me go to a new page. So we have one half and three fourths. We cross multiply, I get four and I get six. So I know that three fourths is bigger than one half. So three fourths is bigger than one half. And I already know that one third is less than one half. So it's one third, one half, and three fourths. Another way to do it is to find the least common denominator. So if we have one half, one third, and three fourths, if I look at these numbers, I can figure out the, and if you can't figure out the least common, common denominator by looking at them, you would have to write out all of the multiples um, and then find the, the one that's, the first one that you see that's in common with all three. Um, but I know that the least common denominator here is 12. So let's go to a new page. So we one half, one third, and three fourths. And I like to write them vertical like this. And we just said that they're going to be 12 as a denominator. And remember, whatever you do to the denominator, you must do the numerator. So times 6, times 6, times 4, times 4, times 3 times three, and all you need to do now is to order them by the numerators. So the smallest is going to be one-third, the middle one's going to be one-half, and three-fourths obviously is going to be the biggest. Okay, next thing you need to know is how to uh, compare um, fractions with decimals. So if I have one-half, 0 0.4, or four-tenths, and um, let's do uh, Three tenths. Okay, what I would do is just make it easy. Is to um, make well, it's up to you. You can either make every, each one a fraction, or you can make each one a decimal. So, if I make um, each one a fraction, I could take one half. Four tenths is four over ten, and I have three tenths. So now at this point, all you need to do is you can either a cross multiply or find the least common denominator. The easiest way for this one is to find the least common denominator, which is obviously 10. So 1 half will be 5 tenths. We have 4 tenths and 3 tenths. And if I look at this, 3 tenths is the smallest, then 4 tenths, and then 5 tenths. Okay, so next one um, that you're going to need to know is to figure out prime or composite. So remember, prime only has a factor of one in itself, and composite has more than one in itself. So if you look at a number like 12, 
I know that the factors are 1 times 12. I go next. The next one is 2 times 6, and I'm already done. I know that. I knew that right away because it is even, and it's greater than 2. Remember, 2 is the only prime number. You need to use your divisibility um, rules, and that would help it. So, for example, um, the number 60, uh, let's do 69. And if you didn't know 69 is prime or composite, all you have to do is, if you add up the digits, I got 6 plus 9 is 15, and I know I could divide 15 by 3. If I could do that, that means then 69 is divisible by 3. Uh, a different one, like 129. Um, Again, if I add up 1 plus 2, that's 3, plus 9, that will equal tw uh, 12. So 12 is divisible by 3, so 129 is divisible by 3. To do divisibility rule for 4, if you look at a number like 32, if I could divide 32 twice, two times, by 2, then it's divisible by 4. So 32 divided by 2 is 16, and I could divide 16 by 2, so that's divisible by 4. If I look at 19, I know 1 plus 9, that's 10. I can't divide by 2, I mean 3. I can't divide it by 2. I can't divide by 4. I can't divide by 5. I can't divide by 7. I keep going. I know then 19 is going to be prime. So make sure you know prime versus composite. Okay, prime factorization. So if I take a number like, let's do 63, and I say do, uh, list out all the prime factors, what you're going to do is do, the, the easiest way is to do a factor tree. So I say 63. What two numbers make 63? I know it's 9 times 7. Circle the prime. 9 is 3 times 3. Circle the primes, and I'm all done. So what you need to do, and I tell you, please put a numerical order. So it's 3, there's two 3's, so it's 3 squared times 7. So 3 squared times 7. Let's try another one. Uh, let's do um, 32. So 32, right away you should know you could divide by 2. And I know there's other ways too, but if, if you get stuck, just look at it and you can divide by 2 because it's even. 16, I know I could divide that by 2. 8, I know I could divide that by 2. And finally, I have 4, so it's 2 times 2. So I count up my 2's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's 2 to the 5th power. Okay. Um, common factors. Make sure that you know how to do common factors between two numbers. So if I have 8 and let's do 12, list out all the factors. So I would start with 1 times 8, 2 times 4, 3. Can you do 3? No. Can you do 4? Yep, but you already did it, so you're done. So the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. For 12, it's 1 times 12, 2 times 6. Can 3 go into 12? Yes. 3 times 4. Can 4 go into 12? Yes, but you already did it, so you're done. So the common factors would be 1, 2, and 4. So the answer is 1, 2, and 4. So make sure you know how to do common factors. Um, multiples. If I give you a number, you need to give me the multiple. So like 8, so you would say 8, 16, 24. I think you know how to do that. Greatest common factor, what I would do is just make a division ladder. That's the easiest way. So if you have, let's say, 16 and 48. So 16 and 48, make a division ladder, and I say to myself, what number could go into both? Now I know 8 can go into both, but let's say you didn't know that. So start with 2. 2 into 16 is 8. 2 into 48 is 24. Then make another ladder, and I look at it and I say, okay, what could go to 8 and 24 evenly? You know, 2 can. 2 goes into 8 4 times. 2 goes into 24 12 times, okay? And then, oh, you notice, oh, 4 can go into both of these. So 4 goes into 4 one time, 4 goes into 12 three times. As long as you, at the bottom, you look at those two and you say, oh, can anything divide into each of those? Um, no. So then you're done. So it's, you're, you're done with your division ladder. So you take these numbers here. And again, you might have different numbers. It doesn't matter. So I have 2 times 2 times 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, so 16 is your greatest common factor. 
Um, okay, least common multiple. So least common multiple, let's go over how to do that. So let's say I have um, nine and 21. Uh, so remember, least common multiple is the first common multiple, the first one that they ha share in common, uh, multiple, the first one that you see. So that's least common multiple, LCM. So what I told you in class, y there's several ways to do it. You could list out all the, if you get stuck, list out all the multiples of 9. So 9, 18, 27. 21, you could do the same thing. 21, 42. Keep going until you find the first one. If you get stuck, do that. Otherwise, one of the better, best ways is to do prime factorization of each number first. So 9 is 3 squared. 21 would be 7 times 3, so it's 3 times 7. I like to do uh, 3 first. Okay, so when I look at this, I say, okay, let me just erase this. So I look at each one, and I, I need to take the biggest of uh, each number that I say. So, for example, I have 3 squared and 3. What's bigger, 3 squared or 3? Three? 3 squared is bigger. Then I see I have a 7 here, but there's no 7 here. So 7 is bigger than no 7 at all. So you must use that 7. So when we figure this out, 3 squared, remember, squared is, is 3 times 3, not 3 times 2. 9 times 7, so your LCM, or least common multiple, is 63. Let's try another one. Uh, let's do 24 and 36. Okay, so again, you could just write out all the multiples and find the one that comes first or work with the prime factorization way. 24 would be 8 times 3. 8 is going to be 4 times 2 and then 2 times 2. So I know that 24 is 2 cubed times 3. 36, I could do 4 times 9. F oops, I didn't mean to circle that. Uh, let me erase that. Okay. Let's rewrite 4. 4 is going to be 2 times 2. And 9 is going to be 3 times 3. So we have 2 squared times 3 squared. Okay, so uh, let me write this on a new page. So we have, for not, uh, so we have 2 cubed times 3 and that was for 24, and then we have 2 squared times 3 squared, and that was for 36. So 24 and 36. So I look at it, and I say, okay, what's, look for the biggest one. Remember the biggest one. So I see 2 cubed, 2 squared, I'm using 2 cubed. Times 3 and 3 squared, I take 3 squared. So the answer is 8 times 3 squared is uh, 9, and the answer is going to be 72. Make sure you know cubes and squares. So for example, if I have 4 squared minus 2 cubed, you need to figure that out. So 4 squared, you rewrite underneath, is 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. So that's 16 minus 2 cubed, which is 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2, which is 8. So 16 minus 8, 16 minus 8 is 8. If you understand how to do all that, you're going to be fine. Plus, since, since this is our first uh, quiz, I'm going to uh, have open notes, so you'll be able to look at your notes.